Hello and welcome to our webinar on how to earn a living from vehicle diagnostics now and in the future. The webinar is based on questions and issues we come across daily in thousands of workshops and workshop businesses worldwide. So some of the questions are, are you struggling to build customers for all the time you spend diagnosing issues? Do you want to earn decent money from diagnostics and auto electronics now and in the future? Don't know what equipment to invest in next? What training should you be doing now? What direction to go in for technical support and technical information and data? What changes to block exemption since Brexit? How this affects you, your business now and in the future? And modern vehicles, exactly how complex are they likely to get and what's next? Aftermarket tools, how good are they and what is their future? Remote diagnostics, can you make any money from them and what's their future? and also OEM tools. What are they? How do you get them? And what options do you have? How can you ensure that your business will be ready for the future? How to make opportunities out of the complexity. So just going to tell you a little about ourselves. So we're from Maverick Diagnostics. Um, we're a diagnostic tool, technical support business, basically. Uh, we supply dealer tools, um, AC equipment, training, technical support, vehicle technical support, tool technical support. Uh, we support all the major vehicle manufacturers brands. Um, and we basically are here to help the independent garages grow and maintain profitability. We'll talk a bit about our backgrounds in a minute. Uh, we originally established in 1999 as Maverick Technology. Um, we've been through a lot of things over the years, a lot of the technical evolutions from the very basics of diagnostics, and now we're firmly carrying on the world of ADAS and EV and hybrid vehicles. So about us, who are we? We are vehicle master techs, system engineers and IT professionals, so a real bunch of people from different fields actually. So. Um, We've come from diagnostic tool manufacturers, workshops, car sales, the robotics industry, believe it or not, um, IT support and motor factor groups, more importantly, as well. So why we're here today is basically the need for dealer tools has increased tenfold since 2014, as many of you would be aware. Um, the need for information and training tech support will become more important than owning a set of spanners in the next 10 years. So... Just an introduction to me first, um, I'm Andy Brook. Um, <clears throat> I'm an old boy. <laughs> Over the last 25 years, I've worked as a diagnostic tech, really from the beginning of diagnostics. Um, I've sold and supported OEM tools. I've worked with manufacturers to develop diagnostic tools. Um, I've done training programs. I'm now quite involved with the IAAF and UKF car. This is all the uh, technical things to do with CIRMI, block exemption, that sort of side of it, which is really, really important to anybody in the trade to keep their rights to use, not only diagnostic tools, but to be buying um, non-original parts, let's say, and other things. So to keep the motor factors in business and all you guys in the garages in business. So um, I'm working on that. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling quite play, well placed to talk to people about the, the market currently. And I'm Dave Jones. I'm here to answer all your technical questions. So I've worked in all areas of diagnostics. I've sold, supported, developed software and hardware since the early days of diagnostics, where I worked for LS UK back in the early 1990s on um, single point and multi-point fuel injection and common rail, di uh, sorry, not common rail diesel, um, L Lucas CAV diesel. Um, so yeah, I've um, worked quite heavily and pioneered pass-through tools in the UK now for well over 10, 12 years. Uh, I'm known in the business as awesome knowledge. Some of you who know me may agree, may not agree. Um, and uh, Andy and I started Maverick Diagnostics in 2017 
following on in 2016 from the purchase and the demise of the old Maverick technology business. Uh, and we set it up with the sole intention to support dealer diagnostic tools, uh, services and support to the aftermarket uh, and a lot, lot more. So let's go back, back to the beginning. <clears throat> so quite honestly, I've, I've written all this down, but I'll just really talk through this. Um, like everybody, I started off with, you know, some very basic tooling. Most of it cost a fortune back in the day. When the first set of tools came out, they were costing me over £3,000. Um, once all the big box crypt on and all that went out the window. I mean, I keep lots of tools and Dave will tell you all about this. We were actually chucking a few away this week. Um, I do things like, and I've put this in here, I've got an old on my scam one. So I can do discovery one faults like that's ever going to happen. But, you know, I, I have a whole plethora of tools that I use. But what we really want to talk about at the moment is, you know, did they ever pay for themselves? And this is quite a relevant point when we go through to the future as well and what's going to pay for itself. And I've put here, for the answer, we need to look back at the beginning of modern diagnostics. Pre started after the flash code era because flash codes were flash codes. You could count those and you had a book, so it didn't matter. Um, most workshops, when we started off really selling diagnostics and developing them, were just happy if they could communicate with the car at all. That was the selling point. You had a boot full of tools. They'd say, this is, a, oh, I've got this over here, plug in. And if you can communicate with that lad, I'll buy the tool. Um, and that was basically, you know, we used to clear the codes and hope for the best. Um, and as I've put in here, a lot of people just worked upon the fact that they would replace the component mentioned in the fault description, which is very hit and miss. Now I've put, thank God we're all a bit more educated now, but to be fair, there are people still using uh, diagnostic replacement techniques. So if you're still doing that, I think you really need to listen to the rest of this webinar because we, we'll allude to a little bit more about that later. So carrying on with that, um, when we started with these initial diagnostic checks, it was always the case. I mean, I know that my own garage was, um, my first one was in a little village and I get people roll in and say, oh, the light come on on my car. What does this mean? Um, I would just plug into the car and I wouldn't really charge them. And then looking back on that, you know, did we ever get a return on investment from those, say, snap on or whatever tools I had at the time or Bosch KTS or whatever it was I used to plug in? Um, did we get a return and how do we get return on mod these modern tools is more up to date, you know. So 20 years on, a lot of hindsight, smart workshops have initial diagnostic assessment and hourly diagnostic fees in addition to normal labour fees. We all need to pay for the additional training, software subscriptions, OEM fees, updating, blah, blah, blah. So basically what I'm saying is it's got very expensive, so we need to align our businesses with how to make profitability out of these tools. Um, so I'm going to let Dave talk about the next slide in a second. So yeah, advanced vehicle technology, we either love it or we hate it, but it doesn't really matter because it's here to stay. So a modern vehicle, it's basically um, just a collection of um, computers now. So it's like a, a, a laptop on wheels, all right? So if you're a bit of a technophobe, then this scenario gets far, far worse. You know, because when you investigate that latest fully digital vehicle with multiple systems, some of them have got driver assistance systems now, controlling the EV and hybrid batteries. You know, as an independent workshop, how on earth do you keep up with any of this? Uh, and simply put, there's no magic bullet. There's no one does everything diagnostic tool. In fact, it's quite simple. You must readjust your views of diagnostics and your business, and you need to make an opportunity out of the complexity. What we're saying here is picture me. I love points and carbs, and I genuinely do love points and carbs. I'll play all day with them. But if you're thinking that Mrs. Jones is um, 2008, um, Persia is going to last forever, and diesel engines are going to be around you're deluding yourselves they're going to get taxed out of the market you can see what's already happening whether you love ev and hybrid you look at every single tev advert they're there and cars are sold these days on what infotainment system they've got not what they do and uh, it's, it's you know you can see yourselves where it's all going 
the complexity. Um, I remember back in the day, and this shows my age, when we were dead excited because a car had power steering. You know, now the standard fitment on a car is going to be ADAS, um, TPMS, you name it, it's going to have it over the next few years. So you've really got to get with the program on this. Yeah, it's hard to think that Euro 5 is and probably is probably more than 10 year old. So, you know, the DPF, diesel particulate filter, first introduced over 10 years ago. So, let's talk a little bit about tools now. So, <clears throat> a lot of people don't really understand where the tools come from. And Dave and I are particularly well placed because we've actually worked in this. Um, designing tools, guided user interfaces, doing the actual engineering side of it. So we can actually explain to you what, how they're made from the bottom end. We still do quite a bit of this um, for businesses and do development and testing and stuff so so what are they aftermarket tools so i'm gonna let dave have a chat through this one yeah so all legitimate aftermarket diagnostic tools they've, they've generally been reverse engineered from a from an oem or a, a genuine dealer tool so this in, in reverse engineering it's totally legal so you're not uh, you're actually replicating the process you're not actually copying the process um, so, so there's no copyright uh, procedures in place for it. So you're actually um, rep you're actually um, trying to replicate how these things work, and you're recording and you're reversing engineering from that process. So, in the case that um, um, the inevitable, you know, there's no expensive legal actions with any OEMs that can come into question. What we're saying there is basically, if you copy it, which we've known some manufacturers do. It inevitably ends up in a really expensive court case, is, is what I was saying. But if you look on the diagram here, this is just showing what happens after the event, really, which is you don't have any connection to the OEM server. You don't have a connection to the cloud. The aftermarket tool just works independently. Um, I know some of you are going to say some of the new stuff has gateway module access, but that is gateway module access. That is not connecting to OEM. That is just literally a gateway that unlocks and gives it a code security gateways but <clears throat> here's a real important point to this so vehicle software is now recognized the key component of all vehicles so forget <clears throat> electric motors engines whatever you thought in the past software is where it's at so we spend hundreds of millions yearly in development the oems uh, to keep vehicles in their own dealer networks safeguard their huge investments oem software now makes vehicles very secure and very very difficult to reverse engineer how they achieve this is to sort of software on cloud portals and to add security gateway modules to the vehicle. As I said, you can unlock the security gateways legally and stuff like that, but that actually, every time you go in with your tool, that is actually going to cost the diagnostic tool manufacturer a couple of euros to do it. Or, or the user. Or the user, yeah, which is depending on what tools you use. Bosch, Delphi, they have all those access. Um, <coughs> these changes give manufacturers the ability to change software on a daily basis. When they're on a cloud, it just downloads the car, which we'll explain later. And it goes, hello, um, shakes hands with the car, and the OEM tool basically does it and updates it to the latest version, a bit like your iPhone. Yeah, um, but, let's, after, but let's be clear, but the aftermarket tools, they'll always have a place in the market. Absolutely, you know, yeah. You're still going to use them every single day. There are still going to be scenarios where you just want a quick, simple code read to give you that base idea. And as, as we put in here, we actually use them every day in the workshops. So we get out, we've got a selection of aftermarket tools, anything from Bosch, G-Scan, you name it, we've got it. And we'll read a car because we know what roughly they cover and what they're quite good on. But <coughs> say, for example, we had a car yesterday where we couldn't do anything with it and we realized quickly it needed software updates. So we had to get the OE tool and we found out there's a load of technical service bulletins to update a load of other modules. And we could have spent all day with the aftermarket tool messing around and getting absolutely nowhere. As soon as we plug the OEM tool in, bang, it's off. So we'll talk a little bit more about pass-through next. So Dave, fill your boots, you're the pass-through man. 